Good morning, good afternoon, welcome to our Config Manager Troubleshooting Masterclass Preview. This is the first time we do this. Kent, hey there, how are you, sir? Hey, good morning or good afternoon. It's 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 from my neck of the woods here, so I'm I'm doing all good. All good. That sounds good. Super, super happy to be here. So, yeah. Yeah. so for everyone that uh, are attending and joining in, we will happily accept any questions or comments that you have. We're keeping an eye on the chat that we have here going, and it means you can ask questions on either LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube. For those of you attending the stream on Twitter, Unfortunately, that uh, API or that platform doesn't allow for interaction through through tweets, and I, I still call it Twitter. If I'm going to do that for <laughs> many years to come, even I know it changed the name recently. But uh, this class here is something that me and Ken present uh, a few times every year. It's a week long class focusing on config manager troubleshooting, and you may ask. Why? Well, what, what's, what was the reasoning behind this, uh, this creation? Because we've been doing it for quite a while. And I, I tried to put that in, into some sort of wording. And for me, it's always been about, I mean, we both, me and Kent, we've been working with Config Manny for years and years and years. And it is a truly great platform. But it has a bit of a learning curve. And there is a lot of moving components in that platform. And what we learned over the years is that once you understand what, what's going on behind the scene, all the different processes, all the different flows, it simply allows you to troubleshoot it so much more effectively or so much more quickly. And that is sort of the gist of this class to, to give you that information and uh, basically show you how to find out what's going on when it appears that config value is being a little bit of having a hiccup. Uh, often it's just, no, it's actually this going on here and then this happened and then it happened. And once you know that, you're like, okay, cool. But uh, you can see uh, I'm also dressed up for the occasion here, Kent. I'm not sure if you noticed. Yeah, but that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a, it's a T-shirt with a Darth Vader leading uh, an Imperial Walker. Uh, and, and I wanted to share a story about this because... We were going to a conference, and you were at the same conference, Kent. It was up in Nick in Oslo a few years back. We were flying, went through the airport, and we had that sticker also on one of our laptops. And I may or may not have <clears throat> forgotten such laptop in the security checkpoint. I realized it pretty quickly. I called back and talked to the security person in charge. And it's like, I'm oh, sorry, forgot our laptop. It has the sticker on it. It has the serial number. Yeah, we we do have a laptop matching that serial number, but there is there is no there is no Imperial Walker, there is no Darth Vader, <laughs> but there is a sticker of a gentleman leading a, a camel in a rope. I'm like, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's ours. <the> <laughs> yeah. I figured he was not too much into Star Wars, but it's like one of those. Yep, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got the laptop <laughs> back a... and everything. All is good. Yeah. <laughs> Total sidebar, yeah, but <clears throat> it's a good story. It is a good story. <laughs> but but you are but 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 uh, but you I mean you are touching on, on on something super crucial in understanding configuration manager as a platform. Not not the camel though, but but it there are so many moving parts, and that to me is probably you know that's that's. that's Super difficult to learn, but once you learn it all, once you sure. understand how all of these moving parts interact with each other, then you then you can do what I would call very very effective troubleshooting, and that's really what we are trying to 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 unlock during these five days here. You know, look at all the moving parts, how do they connect to each other, and if it's if it's you know red over here. Then it's not the same necessarily as it's you know also burning over here. It could be you know in total other direction. Uh, yeah. Indeed. So I'm I, I'm 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 with you on the, on all the moving parts there. I I totally see the same. Right. Uh, so what we prepared for today was basically we picked a few talking points of things that we usually discuss in this class and simply could um, walk you through these guys. 
So Kent, would you like to share your screen? I know you presented yep. or prepared a little. Uh, yeah, just a, f a few slides here, and then uh, obviously, um, you know, just let me know if, if if there are any questions here. But but the first one. <clears throat> let me just share the first that. one. Uh, get rid of this one and over that one. Yeah. Beautiful. Perfect. So the f the first one is you know. Why is you know why is this important at all? And is it just important to you and to you know the likes of Johan and me because we 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 like working with devices? Why is device management so critical? It it has actually become you know business critical right now. Device management is one of the 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 seven pillars that we have in zero trust. Uh, so, so obviously we, we need to get the users in control and data and so on and so forth, but applications and devices, those two pillars, they belong to you. That's your responsibility. And um, the gentleman that I have over here on my right side, you know, you probably know the, the phrase, his hands can't hit was it what his eyes can't see. That's, that's, that, that has never been more true. You are unable to manage what you you know you you can't see and what you don't have in control. So some of the things that we really really need to be focusing on and that we will be focusing on is how do I get all my clients in control? You know, you know, and that's that's everything from from understanding and and learning about the CCM evaluation process uh, to to you know uh, break a client on purpose. You know what happens when I break WMI? What's the name of the log file to look for, and what 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 actions do I actually start when I when I do something like this? Um, that is super important. Uh, and another thing to you know why this is important. I think I had that here. Uh, I just read a report here. Um, Microsoft Microsoft is, is is sending out a report you know once a year, the Digital Defense Report. Eighty to ninety percent of successful ransomware they come through unmanaged devices. Uh, and that's 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 the one, I mean, I've, I've been asked that question so many times, you know, hey Kent, how many devices do we have? And I go like, holy cow, <laughs> uh, because how do I answer that? Uh, well, you know, in this collection, I have uh, uh, 25,000 devices or 1,800 devices. Um, but, you know, how many devices do you have in SCCM? How many devices do you have in your XDI and Defender? How many devices do you have in ServiceNow and so on and so forth? And we really need to understand, you know, how can we make sure that we have nothing but good active devices. Um, and, and obviously, if, if a device is not enrolled into Configuration Manager, you might go like, you know, but, but then, then, it's, then it's not my problem. But it will at one point become your problem is if we are hit by ransomware. So we, we, we obviously need to know, you know, how do, I, how do I make sure, how do I ensure that the devices are having control, that they stay in control? And to do that, you need to know about the client architecture. You need to know about, you know, all the log files that you have in your CCM setup folder. You need to know about probably not all the log files that you have in your CCM folder locally on the client, but you need to know about your client location, location services, client ID, startup manager, and so on and so forth. So you at any given time can, can can you know uh, troubleshoot the uh, client installation process, the client assignment process, and then what I would call the daily operational uh, client processes. You know, uh, why is inventory not floating uh, the way that it's supposed to be floating? And the only way you can really and truly troubleshoot that is by understanding the architecture and by understanding what are the main components, how do they interact with each other. Um, and it seems like a super easy question, you know, hey, Kent, how many kids do you have? You know, I, sh I shouldn't be, I should be able to answer that fairly quickly, right? Um, but when it comes to, you know, how many how many clients do I have? Uh, it's it's often a bit more tricky. Yeah, but it, it, uh, it also comes down to, I mean, as you mentioned, there are log files, great for troubleshooting. Oh, yeah. Problem is there are hundreds of them <laughs> divided yep. between uh, server and client. And 
it's one task to memorize what each and every one of them do. You can probably do that if you stare at the list long enough because they are documented. The real trick is knowing, okay, when I do this in Config Manager, when I deploy an application, when I distribute content, which log files are triggered, in what order. So I can start to flow through that process or follow that process hmm. because that once you once you master that skill, that's when you find that, oh, it actually wasn't as bad. It was just the, the UI that didn't quite get updated yet because there was a summarization that did not yet run or something. But it just the log files are, are your, your best friend. But it... Uh, so they, they they are because otherwise you end up chasing goat uh, ghosts yeah. because as you say there is a delay in there uh, and and yeah that that is that is super important so you know deep dive into into the the the, the client architecture the understanding of the log files the main components and so on and so forth that's important so that that's that's like the fast uh, the first part we have uh, in here yeah. Should I move on with my second part here, Johan, uh, uh, while I'm sharing my screen? Yeah, please do. Go ahead. Yeah, yep. So, and I'll, I'll, I'll stay in, I'll stay with the a security illustration here because just, just to emphasize how important the work that you are doing is to security. Um, and this is again taken from the very same uh, report. Where they uh, where they say well 99% of uh, you know of of all attacks can be prevented if we just have basic security hygiene, and keep up to date is one of those basic requirements. And we have some other requirements that we're not touching in this class, but but keeping up to date, that's a must. It's not something we can discuss, debate whether or not we think it's a good idea. I, I would say you fail in your job. If 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 you don't ensure that this is this is up to date, now the interesting thing is, you know, going back a few years, uh, keeping up to date was just you know patching, right? Uh, and then every second year we would get a new service pack, and that one we could just plan and then we'll roll it out. Those those days are long gone and <laughs> behind us. Um, patch management is constantly developing these years, uh, if you're asking me. And, and and we need to make sure that we have, you know, how do we patch our drivers? How do we patch our feature updates, our quality updates, our bias uh, applications, and so on and so forth. Um, and only, I would say, only knowing about how we do that with WSOS and Config Manager is, is no longer enough. Uh, you you need to understand how we are also dealing with this in uh, in Asia, for instance, when we're talking about server patching, because at one point that will be something you will you will have to 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 deal with and probably explain to some of your colleagues. And the same goes with Windows Auto Patch. That's why we have it in here, even though it's a it's a Config Manager troubleshooting class, because you 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 need to understand, you know, what are the implications of of, of moving a workload from you know WSOS into Windows Auto Patch. Will you will you win something? What will you what will you win? What are you know what are the benefits and and so on and so forth. Um, and then for troubleshooting, WSOS is fantastic <laughs> because there are so there are so many different areas where you have to do stuff, right? You know, it all starts with the application pool. All the application pool settings we we all remember a few years ago, where you know, uh, all of a sudden scanning just stops and why aren't we scanning any longer and the application pools have crashed why have they crashed you know how much memory should i allocate how do i monitor that um so yeah there has there's definitely over the last couple of years been a lot of uh, good articles on on how to keep your wsos uh, healthy i mean you um you put together a, a, a fantastic block uh, a couple of years ago, Johan, where you said, okay, these are these are all the best practices around WSOS. Uh, this is what you should be doing. And we 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 obviously look at this. I mean, this is this is the real stuff, right? Uh, oh, you refer to the the best uh, defense is a good offense <laughs> type. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it all exactly. comes down to trying to be a little bit proactive, setting up the platforms yep. in a way that allow them to be a little bit more resilient when there are hiccups or when Microsoft releases something that probably shouldn't have 
uh, which they did back yeah. then. <laughs> yeah. So so but 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 this is this is and has been for a while, you know, a big topic, and uh, and it's. I know we can just set up an automatic deployment rule, and then you know we have automated, you know, the majority of of, of everything that should be going on here. But but the whole infrastructure, you still need to pay attention to that. Just just the just the fact of you know, I, 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 I answer this simple question: How many of your clients failed the scan within the last three days? That's that that's something that we will uh, dig into in here. So you'll be able to answer that. You'll see, okay, I have these 250 clients failing. These 85 fail because of a group policy uh, conflict. These fail because of this and that and so on and so forth. So so knowing all of this uh, is, is super important. Um, and that, that goes, you know, that goes hand in hand with, with the whole troubleshooting part here. And just in WSUS, there are, there are a lot of moving parts, right? We have the client agent, we have the catalog, we have, you know, the the SCCM database, we have the WSUS and so on and so forth. Way too many moving parts, if you ask me, but that's how it is when you're dealing with a 20 year plus old service. Yeah, it's been around for a bit. <laughs> yep, oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay, so so that's that's another one of the major topics here, uh, and and we are super passionate about uh, patching here. Now, <clears throat> we we have another one uh, that um, because I, I I love using buzzwords, and I was like, what's the biggest buzzword that that I haven't used for the past uh, six months, and that's digital transformation. But but anyhow, it we 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 cannot just sit and say no no. no. You know, I'll, I'll be managing everything with SCCM or Config Manager. I've been doing that for years. And Microsoft has, by the way, also promised me that, you know, a, a Config Manager will, will stay here uh, for as long as, as, as we can see. And, and they have done that. There is no doubt about that. They are, they are very clear in, in their messaging. Um, but I to, to keep, a, you know, like a red a thread in here, uh, I was like, okay, so let's look into zero trust because if you want to build a zero trust program and maybe you don't want to do that but your business wants you to contribute into that then um, how many how many of us will have a measurable zero trust program in place in two years time just about 10 percent of enterprises uh, and today we have less than one percent so if you're feeling like you know a little left behind or if you go like well you know, uh, we haven't started that journey now. Where do we start, and so on and so forth? Then you're definitely not a, uh, you're, you're not alone. Um, but but the cloud is here, and we need to we need to understand uh, first of all the values, um, but also how how Config Manager uh, plays together. What is Microsoft's strategy on on on, on using the cloud uh, when it comes to device management? Um, we have. We we have cloud components in here, and yes, they also need a little, a little love, <laughs> and they they also come with uh, uh, with a lot of different log files. So co-management super important. Uh, some of you have already co-managed your infrastructure, but I uh, I keep hearing about uh, fun co-management stories. Uh, so I had I had one a couple of, of weeks ago where they said, well, we enabled co-management, and then suddenly all of our devices started up in a in an autopilot reset. Uh, is that normal? I was like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you autopilot in, registered any of your devices? And they were like, no, no, no. That's also why we thought it was, you know. So, and that's the thing. Sometimes we we you know we 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 just have to take the blame for a, a ton of stuff that we probably haven't done and i mean naturally you don't automatically autopilot enroll all of your devices just because you enable config manager co-management those two things are really not related um <clears throat> so but you need you you need to know and you need to need to understand the co-management the cloud attach or the tenant attach and also cloud management gateways because they are super important when we are when we're extending our infrastructure into the cloud um so so a lot of lot of goodies here uh, and typically what we will do in in, in classes um, uh, 
the the instructor will always have a uh, an Intune Azure integrated environment. So if if there are any questions, uh, we can we can definitely go in and and and, and troubleshoot uh, to you know to see if 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 anything um, doesn't work as it's expected to work. Um, so that's that's it. I mean, this is this is really also you know we need to understand where Microsoft is going because with with Config Manager, we have, you know, we have placed a lot of eggs in that basket uh, when it comes to to device management. Um, <clears throat> and then my final uh, piece in here, that's that's really that was the whole idea when when Johan and I we sat down years ago. Just, we, we, where there is there is such a need for, you know, for learning how to troubleshoot uh, Config Manager. So there are obviously, for my part, there is a specific module just on troubleshooting techniques. How do we troubleshoot? Uh, how do we figure out what what tool to use? You know, sometimes it's it's WMI related. Other times it can be SQL, you know, related. Um, what what are the troubleshooting tools that Microsoft is making available? Uh, you know, some of the tools they have are like uh, ten years old, but there have been hidden gems, and when maybe not all of you know how to how to to use them. And then obviously the community. That's 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 also why we're here. This is a fantastic community. So so understanding all the community tools in here. We are not covering all the community tools. Trust me. <laughs> then it would have to be a twenty-day class. But 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 there are there are specific troubleshooting tools that has been made available by the community. Um, yeah. These are just some of the topics. Yeah, yeah. a ton of topics. <laughs> I, I remember one of the, the, the former MVPs, Rob Marshall uh, from the UK, he even wrote a utility a few years back to track all the community tools that existed for Config oh, yeah. at the time. That's... And when he came yeah. up to number 300, he just threw in the towel and, and gave up. I was like, all right, that's it's too much work <laughs> to, to, to do that. But that, that's what I like about, not like love, about the Config Manager and Intune community is so helpful. And we are even see uh, on, on from social media, uh, primarily Twitter, of, of for all reasons, turned out to be the platform of, of use. Even Microsoft has started to chime in. You see members from mm. the product team, you see developers, you see program managers are chiming into the discussions. And that's, I absolutely love that. That That's so good. Now, okay. For can I steal the screen by any chance, sir? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. All right. So, um, in this particular class, I uh, my my part is uh, focusing mainly around imaging. Uh, it's a big passion of mine. Always enjoy doing deployment, and I'm doing that for most of my working life. Coming up, I don't know, thirty some years soon here, but there are. Even for imaging with Config Manager, and when we do servicing, we upgrade Windows 10 to another version of Windows 10, or we upgrade from Windows 10 now to Windows 11, a journey that pretty much every organization are at some point in, because in two years' time, you better be ready, because that's where we no longer receive security updates to Windows 10. And as Kent mentioned here, patching is important. We cannot really knowingly not patch our devices. That's a no-go. Uh, that, that, that could be a resume <laughs> generating event right there. Uh, if, if you skip patching, it's one thing if you get told not to do it and get that on paper, but if you as an admin decide not to patch because whatever reason, that, that is probably not the wisest uh, decision there. But uh, from an imaging part, I, I wanted a few, three things that I, I cover in class. and. Uh, I'm not as, as good designers as Kent did with slides, so I simply prepared a few demos. I figured that would be easier, and plus I like doing yeah. demos, so that goes a long way too. <laughs> but but you know why you have slides? That's because you didn't prepare demos. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so um, <laughs> when you work with imaging, you typically end up having uh, a good chunk of sequences available. So here is one of my uh, config menu servers. Well, I have a few, uh, as you do, a few different labs. And by the way, speaking of labs, 
uh, a good 60% of the time in class is focusing on hands or labs as well, where you actually will do the troubleshooting steps. And uh, I remember one of Ken's exercises there where you actually, uh, I wouldn't say destroy your client, but you introduce things that break stuff and then you fix them. And that, that's what I like to do. Uh, anyhow, uh, when you have a lot of different sequences, they will have obviously one or more steps in them. And one very effective way of troubleshooting a step of or a list of sequences or actions like this is to enable the task sequence to debugger. That's something you can do by right-clicking sequence and hit debug and it will deploy it with the debug setting on. Or in my environment, I simply enable it on the collection because that's a very easy way to toggle debugging on or off for a few specific deployments. So if I go to one of my devices here, test number one, some good name is any, I go to clean snapshot and I'm going to mount it on an ISO file. That is the boot, man, boot image generated out of config manager. So I'm going to start up this and I'm going to try to hit the key quickly enough. Here we are. Sip of water. Great idea. And um, config manager kicks off the boot image or downloads WinPE. I click next and we'll see all my available deployments. And I'm going to pick one that I have prepared. This is a Windows 10 deployment sequence that uh, enrolls into legacy active directory or join legacy active directory. I added in modern driver management to it. And in the end, I have a call to the web service or admin service that adds the machine to the collection when it's done or to a collection when it's done. But either way, when I select this sequence, I will type in a computer name because I added a variable that allow me to do that. But now I will actually see a visual representation of my sequence. So now I can go through step by step everything that the sequence does. And you will see the information here opening up in real time. So I can check for variable settings. I can see that the scripts are working correctly. And if I want, of course, I can break out in a command prompt and I can open up the log file directly from here. I can also set in breakpoints. I can step through them, go run all the way to a point in my sequence. But this is just one of those really, really useful tools to, uh, to debug your sequences. All right, so that was the first one. And not, not only as a debugging tool, but it also gives you great insights to, you know, everything that's going on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Another very common question that we get is, okay, why is Pixie not working in your environment? I try, try to hit F12 <laughs> to deploy a device and it just refuses to do so. Uh, well, here's the thing. <clears throat> when Pixie breaks, for whatever reason, it is usually not your fault. It's usually the networking team that, that messed something up. It doesn't mean you're completely off the hook, though. So there are a few things that, that you need to make sure are configured in your environment. So did you, for example, enable the Pixie responder on your distribution point? And which responder did you enable? Did you go with the native one? Or did you go with a new one, which is, is uh, this one here? It's a WDS less pixel responder. OK, you did that. Is the service running? Well, if I have the WDS less responder, guess what? There is no Windows deployment server service. Instead, there is a config manual pixel responder. <laughs> And it's probably not running on CMO one since I enable it on uh, DPO one. So, how about we check the right server? What do you say? Should we be more successful of seeing the service? And yes, I know I could have connected remotely through services, but I think that's so painfully slow uh, that process. So I let's just do it here instead. That works just fine. So services. And 
it's like I usually say, what can possibly go wrong in a live demo? But nothing. Nothing. But here is the Texas <laughs> Responder Service. And this one has the same log file as the old one did. So if you look on your various distribution points where you may have enabled uh, this, you will have those unique log files. And you will have the SMS pixel log that is tracking the conversation between a client trying to pixel boot and the server trying to, to, to see if there is an active deployment, if the boot image is available, and things like that. And those are things that you have to check as, as an admin. You have to make sure that whatever boot image that you're using, that it actually is distributed to the Pixie server or to the distribution point. You have to make sure that whatever sequence you were using, in this case, this add to collection sequence, is actually using that boot image that, that you configured. And of course, the boot image itself needs to have been selected to be applicable for a, a, a pixie point or to, to do pixie deployment with. And finally, your, your deployment from your sequence uh, that you have. So if I go to my sequence again and check my deployments, they must have been enabled for allowing it to do those type of deployments. But assuming you did that and it still breaks, it's really not your job at that point. But what I found doing this for way too many years is that if you do the extra mile and do a bit of network troubleshooting on your own and you bring that result to the networking team and say, hey, this is what happens. This is what I found. Can you please help me? So a great scenario here, if you have, say, a distributed environment looking like this, so you have a... a uh, basically, you may have a distribution point up in a central location, somewhat well connected, and you try to do a pixie boot in a location where you don't have one. Well, IP helpers needs to be set up, or uh, scope options also works in the ACP. But if you deploy a client down here, it needs to be able to find that server. And that's, again, using IP helpers typically. Uh, if you have deployments that works in the site over here that is using the same DP, but not over here, is it the distribution point that is incorrectly configured or is it something on the network side? Most likely on the network side. So what you can do to troubleshoot this is you can spin up a laptop in this location and you install, say, uh, a Windows on a VM and you install Wireshark or whatever tool you happen to like to do network traces with. And then you configure that VM on the networking side to be a destination here. And then you do create a blank VM and you try to do a pixel deployment. Because then what happens if you go to that blank VM and set its port mirroring information to source. It means that it's going to send a copy of all the packages to your other VM running the trace. And then you can actually see exactly what's going on. And even if they haven't run a network trace in your life, a boot process with Pixie is usually like 12, 13, 14 packages. It's not much that goes through. And you can set a filter for the boot P protocol and just have those packages there. And you can easily see that did the client get an IP address? Did I get a file to boot from? Could it find my Pixie server? Is it in those that information? And even if you cannot understand a trace, you have it. And you can bring it over to the network folks and say, hey, I have a trace here. Help me parse this. Help me understand this, why this is not working. And even better, if you have a working subnet, you can do a trace there too, and you can compare them. OK, well, why are they different? So even though, as I said, it's not necessarily your job to do that, you will find the solution much more quickly um, if you take that to the networking folks. Those are, uh, those are people you need to be friends with as a config man <laughs> admin, uh, for sure. Uh, the final piece of the puzzle uh, or, or thing I want to touch on today is uh, Budimetis and Config Manager. 
So a few years back, I was uh, I was helping a company in London. They were preparing for a conference, so we were there a few days early to deploy a few devices. Not too many, about six hundred or so. So, well, you can do that pretty quickly. But we started to do deployments. Every single deployment downright failed. And let's see. What we stumbled across was the following error. Oops, I had to open it twice. Didn't mean to do that. And if you have been deploying, doing deployments for more than four minutes, and you get an error message like this, your immediate thought is, ah, oh, I'm missing a driver. Easy fix. We thought so too, but after spending a few hours troubleshooting drivers, it was not drivers. <laughs> It's just that the error manifested itself as it was an issue with drivers. In this particular case, it turned out that the, 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 the gentleman who had configured the network switches for the conference, that was probably a side gig. They were not very good configured. Uh, it took seven seconds for an IP address or for WinP to get an IP address. And WinP gives up about half a second and say, okay, I can't do this. Uh, so we couldn't have them change the network. It was soon to become weak and we needed to solve the problem. So this is one of the cases where knowing what's going on behind the scenes is so important. Because a config managed boot image starts up a custom shell right away that the config manager team wrote. It's called the TS boot shell. That one in turn kick off networking. And if it doesn't get a reply quick enough, it times out and, and gives you something like this. But a normal boot image that comes from the ADK, and that's where config man get its boot image from, if you place a well-crafted under 10 file in the root of that boot image, you can actually initiate commands to run before control is handed over to config man. So what we did was that I put together an under 10 file that looks like this that I, I put in the root of the boot image, and I run, uh, at that time, it was a VB script. Uh, but I'm very proud of this script. And, and Kent, I think, will be very impressed also. Uh, Wait and? Uh, yeah, sleep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, solved the problem. We just told the client to wait 10 seconds, because then they got an IP address, and then it was happy, and problem solved. But without knowing that, OK, if I place such a file there, then I can solve my problems. Maybe I can make WinPE or the boot image more resilient uh, to network hiccups. And there are a lot of stuff for that you can do with Config Manager. You can tell the boot image itself to wait for policies multiple times and do retries. When the sequence is downloading stuff, you can ask it nicely to, to ask for retries and do intervals in between. So even if you are in a network situation that is really very heavily used, or it's simply uh, slow links, that there are ways to mitigate that. But uh, yeah, a lot of moving components, uh, for sure. Yep. <clears throat> but, uh, but this is this is this is just a perfect example of, you know, what what we're doing in here. Um, because most of what we do, if not everything that we do in this class here, is, is taken from you know real life examples that we have we have experienced ourselves. I if, to me a good day is if something breaks because I go like hey there is another lap <laughs> for the brilliant, for the, yeah. for the troubles. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, uh, or blog posts. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah 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 exactly yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> but all right. Um, Let's see here. For those of you that haven't seen it, uh, this is where we have all our class up, uh, classes up on our academy. And this class we've been uh, talking about today is the Mastering Config Magic Troubleshooting course that kicks in on November 13. So. Just a few weeks here, we'll be running that one again. So, um, yeah, Kent, uh, 
Yep. Thank you so much for, for joining and everyone out there. My thank pleasure. you for tuning in. Uh, yep. Have a great rest of the day, everyone. See you all. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.